Today's budget PC is all packed into this Cooler Master Silencio 65 2S PC case that offers some interesting features. As you can see, it is a used case that is slightly dinged up, but overall it is in pretty good shape. So before this video progresses, I should note that I had this stock Intel CPU cooler installed on the i5-9400 CPU. And all the gameplay footage I recorded up until the Fortnite examples was with this cooler. In most of the games, it was perfectly fine, though I did find that with extended use, we were reaching some thermal states that were affecting performance, and this all culminated after extended use and extended gameplay. For general use, this CPU cooler is actually not that bad, and for some light gaming, you're totally fine, but I found with this particular CPU, it really heated up and it didn't quite do the job, so I will be installing this Thermal Red Assassin King 120SE CPU cooler, and I'm looking forward to the performance change. And here we have the Thermal Red Assassin 120X CPU cooler installed. Let's check out the gameplay footage back to back of the Intel cooler and the Thermal Red cooler, and then we can see what difference it makes. Taking a look inside the case, underneath this Thermal Red Assassin King 120 SE CPU cooler, there is a Intel Core i5-9400 CPU with 6 cores and 6 threads. Beside that we have 16GB of Crucial Ballistic 3000MHz RAM, and that's fitted onto this ATX sized motherboard which is an ASUS Prime Z390-P. And for the graphics card, we have an MSI Ventus OC RTX 2060 with 6GB of GDDR6 memory. As we can see in the details of the Tech Power Up website, there's a boost in clock speeds as well as theoretical performance. Just behind this Noctua branded fan splitter I installed for the front air intake fans, there is a 512GB Patriot P300 NVMe solid state drive with Windows 11 Pro installed. For extra storage, I threw in a used Fujitsu 160GB hard drive, and powering it all is this 500W EVGA power supply. This Cooler Master case has sound dampening material on the side panels on the top panel, and if we open up the front panel, it's also there. Now that we have this open, we see that I have this optical drive installed, and this just came with the PC case, and I left it in hoping somebody will have a use for it. There's a removable dust filter here with the two 120mm air intake fans. I suppose you could keep this panel open if you're hoping to get some more airflow. Up on the top I.O. we have USB 3.0, USB 2.0, microphone and headphone input, and an SD card reader which is a nice to have. One added feature to the side panel of this case is something I really like and it's this little removable piece which we can take off to offer some passive cooling. On the rear of the motherboard we have a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, an HDMI port and display port, 6x USB 3.1, RJ45 Ethernet port, and audio in and out. And on the 2060 we have 3x display port 1.4A and 1 HDMI 2.0. On the I.O. shield, there's a punch out for Wi-Fi antenna, as this motherboard does support an M.2 Wi-Fi card if you should wish to install one. Now that we've gone over the basics of the hardware, it's time to check out the gaming and benchmark performance. One thing to consider is that the rest of the gameplay that you're about to see was not filmed with this Thermalrite CPU cooler installed, rather we had the stock Intel CPU cooler. So just to reiterate, I don't really recommend using this CPU cooler if you're wanting to push the system for things like gaming or video editing or 3D modeling. 
For general use, this stock cooler would be totally fine though. I'm not really meaning to contribute to its bad reputation. If you can manage it, this CPU cooler only costs $25.75 Canadian off of Amazon, and the increase in performance you get is well worth it. So thanks a lot for watching the video, and let me know if you're using a stock Intel CPU cooler in 2024 in a similar setup or any setup. Let's check out that gaming and benchmark performance.